Yo. Uh. Hit the thistle dance like I'm Mac Dre. Can't stop looking at it, know them racks safe. Elevating, only half bait. I'm the Tiger Woods of the crap game. Hit the all wash away with the champagne. Cause I bit down on it, left a bad taste. Where is Reverend Al Sharpton in the last days? Another bitch baptized, victim of the wave. Possessed, trying to get a nigga solar praise. Fool for the thought, he was so the same. I'm just trying to rise on the apple place. This hot Jay Z handle, yay. Dolo Valley might have sounded like a Yeezy quote. She a needy hoe, hit her with a peasy quote. Ended on a high note, something CC wrote. Crowns for the kings that BB so. Being misled, I was told things. BB King dead on May 14th. Solitary, never been quarantined. We still going up May 14th. I'm causing problems. So get us all killed. Give them what you got and get them out of here. Shut the fuck up, fat man. This ain't none of your goddamn business. Be cool, honey bunny. Be cool. No problem. I got it under control. About to record this as a podcast? Uh, uh, duh. Okay. Damn, I'm oh, like too built for that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, or whenever the fuck y'all niggas like to listen to this shit. My name is Meech, and I welcome y'all to the Drug Table Talk podcast with Meech and Spiff. And remember, we don't sell drugs, man, we sell knowledge and slang game, man. Hey, man, this is a, a very special podcast this week. We got, you know, to me, you know, one of the, the legends in Detroit, man. My guy Fleas, Dusty. You know, we, we talk a little bit about, you know, early life. We talking about, you know, the music industry and the pitfalls that, that artists fall through and everything above. And, and especially his new album that's out right now. So make sure y'all listen to Dusty McFly, Quiet As It's kept man make sure y'all stream that now you know uh you know forgive me you know the first you know couple minutes of the the episode uh you know it is a little little hard to hear but after probably you know the fourth minute you know everything clears up and we get right into it man so shout out to my first time listeners make sure y'all subscribe um to the podcast and also you know subscribe to our youtube page Meech and Spiff, and shout out to all 13 of the regular listeners of the Drug Table Talk podcast, man. Man, I couldn't do this shit without y'all, man. So, again, shout out to my nigga Fleas, and uh, yeah, enjoy. All right, man, I'm recording right now, man. What's up, let's get So, man, first of all, man, I would like to say, man, you know, it's an honor to speak with you guys. You know, someone who provided the background music to some, I would say, you know, some of the most important years in my life and also my brother as well, too, man. You know, in my opinion, man, you got to be like, you know, definitely one of the most influential artists here in Detroit, man. You know, without further ado, I got my guy, Dusty. Dusty McFly, please, on the phone, man. Sure, man. I, I appreciate them, them, them kind words, my guy, for real. <laughs> Man, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, man. You know, definitely, man. I I definitely got a shout out to you know my home girl Charlotte. You know, I went to school with her, man. And honestly, I think she was like the first one to really put me on, you know, to your music back in the day, man. She was a, uh, you know, she was definitely one of the ones that told me about you, man. That's what's up. Shout out, Charlotte. Yeah, shout out to Charlotte, man. Shout out to her, man. But, you know, without further ado, man, let's get into it, man. Dusty, man. Tell me, man. You know, what? where did you get the name Dusty from, man? So Dusty came. That originated from my grandmother, dude. She uh, 
So this some shit that she just said when I was born, bro. It's really that simple. Like, um, I had like the dusty, the, the the blonde color hair when I first was born, mm-hmm. and it looked like you know, I guess like dust. So she was like, oh, <laughs> dust. you know what I'm saying? And that that was like, that's not my real. That's like I'm real name Derek. You know, I'm a junior. Father name Derek. I'm Derek Junior. But my grandma called me Dusty from. Like right off the gate, and shit, that, that's really the name I had since I was born. Like, nobody really called me my first name. Everybody called me Dusty from school teachers to coaches, everybody, family members, nobody. Mm-hmm. Only person who called me by my never been name, like, my life, you know what I'm saying? That's it. <laughs> the show, the show. Man, you know, shout out to Doc Hicks, man, because I was watching his, uh, his interview with you, you know, um, uh, you know, definitely. It was like a little while ago. I want to say maybe about a year or so ago. And you know, I one thing I I that I learned from that interview, man, is that you know I didn't know you was a hooper like that, man. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I I I was a serious hooper coming up, like um, like real, like really, really into it, man. I I didn't shit, bro. I used to hoop. Uh, Phil, of course, you know, Detroit PSL, um, man, Y, Seven Mile, Tendo, um, all on the west side, bro. Like yeah. every hoop court you can think about from Malcolm Max to well. And that. Yep, we back rolling, man. I, I'm sorry about that, man. It's all good. But yeah, but, man, um, like you were I, saying. I can, you, I can tell you, you know what I'm saying? I um I'm definitely a, a hooper at heart. I started out hooping, you know what I'm saying, all through the West Side, you feel me, uh, everywhere, you know what I'm saying. I, I end up going to a, a middle school, elementary and middle school downtown uh, called Berg International, mm-hmm. and, uh, like in Cass Corridors. And, you know, I just was hooping, bro. My coach, actually, you know, I hoop with Malik Harris. I don't know if you know who Malik Harris is. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the top guys in the city around that era. He was about a year or two older than me. His brother was my coach. That's who coached me and him. So, um, that was really like my, my driving point. You know what I'm saying? I had a, I had a, a uh, I, I looked up to Malik as far as hooping because he was like the closest dude to me that was like polished at like a young age. You know? Right. So like he was that guy. And I think actually Malik got like double promoted in school too. So um, he might only be like a year older than me, but he didn't, you know, he ended up going to Renaissance. Kind of like him and Joe Crawford was like the number one and two guys in the state at the time, the, you know, the duo. Um, the Renaissance duo with Twine Porter and a couple other cats and um end up going to Oregon and going to the league. Mm-hmm. So that was like a drive point to me as far as hooping because he was only about a year or two older than me. And I really was going hard and I ended up injuring myself in high school. So Damn. once I injured myself, yeah, I had like, um, I did, I twisted my back somehow, some way. I don't know what I did in the game, like in the 10th grade. And um, I was out kind of like for that rest of that season. And my um, high school, and I, I went to a, uh, I went to a Catholic school. Um, <clears throat> my ninth and tenth grade year was Benedictine, mm-hmm. Detroit. Benedict. It was right on Southfield, out of drive, right in the hood still. Um, but I went there, and the school ended up closing because the archdiocese. I was a whole bunch of shit that was going on, like you know, with the priests and shit in, in the media. Oh, shit, priests raising kids. <laughs> Not not at our school and shit, but like just with the Catholic Church. Period. Got you, um, got you. With a lot of shit in the media back then about you know priests raping kids and all this stuff and you know all that shit and you know or a lot of the Catholic schools just start closing down because parents didn't want to put their kids in Catholic school because how the media portrayed it. But I really enjoyed Benedictine. I was like my favorite high school I went to. I ended up going to like two or three high schools, but. I really fucked with that high school. It was a small school, wasn't a lot of kids. It might have been like 200 kids in the whole school, and everybody knew each other. It was close knit. Mm-hmm. All my niggas went there. You know, it was dope. But yeah, man, like as far as basketball, I was definitely like, like 
what they say, what you had the basketball drones back then or whatever <laughs> it's called. Like, I definitely had it, like, for sure. Yeah, and man. I ended up stop hooping after that injury. You know what I'm saying? I, I ended up, I continued to hoop, like, my 11th grade year I went in and um, to a new school. And um, I just didn't, I wasn't feeling the coaches. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had already started kind of, like, messing around with rapping and shit at that time. Right. And uh, I was like, you know what, I'm I'm just going to just rap. I don't even want to hoop no more. You know what I'm saying? Because I really didn't fuck with the coaches. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's it's crazy you say that, man, because it's kind of like the same, you know, the kind of like the same story like my my older cousin had, man. You know, my cousin, you know, he's a he's a little bit older than me. Um, you know, of course, you know, we from the east side. He went to he went to Osborne, but you know, it's like during that time, you know, he was he was great at hooping, but you know, other things, you know, took place. Whereas I feel like you know, big cuz could have went anywhere. And I feel yeah. like, you know, that's kind of like the the story that, you know, most of us have here in the city. You know, it takes, you know, sometimes a, a injury or, you know, you try to make some money for, you know, for real life to kick in and for, for paths to change. Yeah, 100%. You got to be, man, with sports, what I learned, I'm, I'm, I always regret, regret quitting like I did. Um Cause I mean, I had scouts and shit looking at me early, like, like, like for real, bro. Like I used to be crispy, bro. Like, <laughs> and I just don't be really. I get, you know, I sometimes I showcase it on Instagram when me and my man be hooping and shit. But like, I had scouts like they tried to get me to go to uh, high school in Arizona as a kid because my old dude grew up and my old dude stayed in Arizona. So. um I had some scouts I had went out there for a summer camp and shit and, and just like one MVP, Dan Marley, uh, was like the Phoenix Suns, uh, Phoenix Suns camp or whatever. And right. Dan Marley, Sean Mary and all them cats was there. And, uh, they wanted me to come out there. Kevin Johnson, uh, he an old school player, but. So oh yeah, you know, I know KJ. Is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they wanted me to come out there and, uh, go to high school but I just you know my mom at the time my uh, my brother was it was only me and my mom and my brother who, you know we lived on the west side of Detroit Finkel Evergreen so my brother was going off to college and you know I ain't want to leave my OG at the crib by yeah. herself you know so I was just like fuck it I'm gonna just stay here yeah that's just like and I was saying dude, man real life starts yeah, to kick in like, uh, go ahead go to he wanted me to go to U of D and I'm like no I ain't going to U of D cause that's where he went to school or uh, boys school, I was like, no, I can't fuck with U of D. I go to I go to uh, Benedictine though. That's right around the corner, you know. Cause my mother wouldn't let me go to Redford. My brother had fucked it up for me as far as like everywhere, every school my brother went to, I couldn't go to because he had already made a bad name for for you know my family and shit, just like fucking up, doing crazy shit. My mom was like, no, you ain't going to Redford, you know that, which was the, like the neighborhood high school right, right around the corner walk the red you feel me but she like no you can't go there so yeah that's pretty much how it went bro man that's what's up man that's crazy man but you know just like you were saying man as far as like you know with instagram you know you don't show everything that that happens on instagram or whatever but you know one thing that i did that i did see and i'm glad to see man i i see that you you know you got a little girl man how how was that man being a father man Man, shit, life changed, bro. Like, shit, really just, I mean, it come natural once we went, and I was scared at first. I'm a little, you know, I ain't, I ain't super, super, super young, but, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a young man, so, you know, um, I was expected to be, like, one of the first niggas in my family to have a kid early, but I just finessed it somehow, and, uh, Shit, when it happened, bro, I just like, man, dog, this shit's scary because I ain't, you know, I, don't, I ain't grow up with a <laughs> two-parent household, really, you know, me and my old dude really ain't just start kicking and kicking it for real till I got, like, out of high school and shit, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, but he was always in my life and shit, but you know how I be just, you know, just you live with your mama and your mama and your grandmother take care of you, you know what I'm saying? So, 
I was scared to be honest with you, bro. But it's you know it's 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 crispy. Like she right in here right now. I got her watching cartoons while I'm doing this with you. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Cause I you know I got a I got a son myself, man, and and I agree with you, man. It's scary, man. You don't you know it's like you're trying to do everything right, but at the same time you're still learning every day. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's every day. It's, it's man, life. Period. Shit is just every day. You learn something new. It's just. That's what it is. I believe that's just the ultimate school and fight. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely, man. Man, listen. You know, I want to. I want to definitely get into the music. I know you dropped that. You know, uh, quiet as kept, man. But you know, I definitely want to uh, talk about like the, you know, the series, man. The Buffy's and Benny Hanna's, man. Now, uh-huh. now let me let me ask you this, man. Cause you know it it, it could have been a rumor, but I think I saw some like many years ago, man. Did you actually get you know a letter from from Benny Hanna's about about the actual name of the album, man? Yeah, yeah, that, that's like that's real, like real shit. Like if you notice, like so, um, when I when I first put out Buffy's and Benny Hanna's, they was uh, they sent the cease and desist, bro. That's wow. They sent the cease to to my management and um and they was like man you can't you can't you can't use our because the what I did what I where I think where I fucked up was um I used a font on like the cover art and shit too you know what I'm saying like the font for the Benny Hanna's letter on a on a restaurant and shit the actual lettering that they use font they use mm-hmm. I used it on the uh, artwork and I think that was the reason they was like really on my head. So I was like, man, I'm not, man, I'm not about to stop using saying Benny Hunters on my shit. Like, like, I, man, like Benny Hunters was like a, like for me, like that was like I, I felt successful when I went to go eat Benny Hunters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. That was like the, the success part of Buffy's and Benny Hunters to me. The Buffy's was like the, I mean, Buffy's is also success, but the Buffy, the, 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 the success of getting the Buffy's was the struggle. You know what I'm saying? Like. Right. Damn, you know, getting a pair of Buffy's was really a struggle back then, and even even when you did have them, it was like it's like a it's like a dark side of it. You know, it ain't like that no more, really. You know, mm-hmm. niggas ain't really killing and doing all that shit over them like how it used to be. But like, them Buffy's were serious back then. So, um, but yeah, they they definitely sent the cease and desist, and um, like even to this day, like even last year, um, I tried to use it. No, not last year, 2018. I tried to use it for uh, BNB3. Right. I tried to put Buffy's and Benny Hunters on the uh on that cover, but not. I wasn't gonna put it. I didn't spell it. I mean, I didn't use a font. I just spelt it out mm-hmm. just regularly because I wanted to say Buffy's and Benny Hunters three instead of BNB3. Somehow they just they just watching what I'm doing, so I don't Damn. I don't know like they they keeping they, they keeping in the loop. So if you look from B- Buffy's and Benny Hanna's one after one like two two uh, one five two and three, I had to put B and B. I couldn't put uh I couldn't put the actual Benny Hanna name on there because mm-hmm. they were sending cease and desist and shit, talk, uh, threatening lawsuits. So Damn. that's how that went. Man, you yeah. would you would think, man, because to, <laughs> to be completely honest with you, man, you know, after after uh, B and B Buffy's and Benny Hanna's came out, man, me and my brothers, man, we used to go up to goddamn Benny Hanna's every damn day, even if it was getting some damn chicken rices, <laughs> like like yeah, honestly, I mean, like you I mean, you really made that shit popular. You know, like as as street niggas, as niggas that come from the streets and in the hood and and living that one life, you know. Uh, to me, it was regular, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. But once I once I did it, and once 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 it was in our mouth here, and the, and, the, and the song came out, and um, you know the mixtape came out or whatever, like we definitely seen a spike. Like I remember trying to go up there, and it was just so packed, like I couldn't get nothing to eat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's, it was crazy. Yeah, man. Definitely. Because I think, like, as far as like you know, Buffy's and Benihana's go, like. You probably had one of the most, you know, iconic runs, if you ask me. You know, when it came to one, you know, 1.5, two. I know three came, you know, definitely later on down the line. But when I tell you, like, the, it was like a a summer, man. We played 1.5 to carry out, like, every 
day, man. Like, it's crazy, man. I appreciate that too, bro. Like, you know, just Detroit is a, Detroit is a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy little demographic and market for, for rap music. You know what I'm saying? I, I see it getting way better than it was back then. Yeah. But it was a little harder to like convince people to fuck with your music and shit because we didn't have the social media and shit. Mm-hmm. And I'm really not no, I'm really not no uh, social media type. Really, you know, I mean, I like social media. I like Instagram. I do like Twitter. Yeah. But I don't really. I, I I rather get on there and look instead of actually be active myself. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? So um, it's it's just a little different from back then, but. I appreciate that, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? 100%. Yeah, man, for sure, man. Because I, I kid you not, man. We used to reenact, you know, uh, you know, the intro when you was calling up, you know, saying like, yeah, what's the specials for today? What's your name? Fleas. I swear to God, man. <laughs> Me and my yeah. brothers used to call up there and be like, all right, we, we placed an order under Fleas. <laughs> for real. <laughs> That's, <what's up. laughs> That's crazy. That's what's up. Appreciate but, that shit, man. It means a lot, though. Like, you know, this is like I said, bro. It's, it's they Detroit a hard market, so when, you know niggas fuck with me. I'd be like, damn, like that's crazy because music's so different from the norm of what's coming out the city. Um, you know, it's just it feels good when a nigga really fuck with you. You know, yeah, for sure, for sure. Now let me ask you this, man. Now you know, with with everything being said, man. And you kind of you kind of alluded to, you know, to times now, it's, it seems like, you know, Detroit is kind of like um, getting to that point where it's recognized and, and 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 the media and everything is starting to turn eyes to Detroit, man. You know, would you now let me ask you this, you know, and this strictly your opinion, man. I personally feel like, you know, when it comes to Detroit, it's, it's hard to like to. What's the word I'm looking for? Overlook Dusty and your contributions, man. You know, do you ever feel like, you know, you get overlooked? Um, yeah, uh, certain days I do, certain days I don't. Mm. Um, I definitely, I, I don't feel like I, uh, yeah, I do a little bit. Um, uh, but it don't bother me though. It don't bother me. That's the difference. Mm. Um, I definitely feel like niggas like act like they don't know or, but I, honestly, I really don't care to be honest. I mean, I'm answering the question for you, but yeah. uh, I really don't even care to be honest with you. Some days I might care. Some days I like uh, when I when I be on like some real flea shit. When I be like just you know be back like I sometimes I get back in that mode. You know what I'm saying? Like well, you know fuck niggas. But, you know the, that mode. You know what I'm saying? Which right. I try not to be a lot now. Um, because that was like my young nigga mode, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like, I feel like niggas know, but it's, it's, it's like niggas don't, niggas don't acknowledge it or don't want to acknowledge it. But like I said, I really don't care for a nigga acknowledging me because I never cared about that, you know what I'm saying? Even as mm-hmm. a kid, like, I really just, it just never, I, another nigga, what another nigga thought of me, I just never cared. Like, that's how secure I am with myself. Now, as far as business, and for the music business, everybody want to be acknowledged for, you know, their art or whatever they put out, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I would I would love a nigga to acknowledge me and tell me, you fuck with me from, you know, damn, bro, I, I, I fuck with you on one. The crazy thing about it is niggas do do that, though. They right. do do it. They just do it when I when I see them or if I see if I you feel me like on a personal note like yeah. so to the to the um to the unseen eye or the or the fans or the or the people that you know what I'm saying don't really know who Dusty McFly is like that uh they they wouldn't know or they wouldn't see it because they favorite rapper that they fuck with. Then told me on a personal level, like, man, I fuck with you, bro. I came up listening to your shit. I was banging your shit, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? You a legend. You you know, they, they do that when I see them. So, I, I, like I said, that's 
that's fine with me. I'm I'm good with that. You know what I'm saying? I, but I do know how much weight it holds in the music business. So, mm-hmm. like I said, some days I can feel, you know, like damn, like niggas be my niggas be trying to, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, I try honestly, I try not to even think like that. But you know, we all human, so sometimes I do get into that mode a little bit. But it is what it is, bro. Like I ain't tripping on it yeah. too much. So you know, like. Like I said, it would help business as far as music if niggas would, you know, acknowledge it. But maybe I just need to acknowledge. Maybe I need to just put it on front street a little more. But it's just not my kid. I just don't be running around boasting and bragging about what I done did for who and what I done did for the city or what who I done did it for. I just read, you know, I'm just, I'm just me, bro. Yeah, man. Because I, I honestly feel like, uh, you know, given you know, you know, rest in peace, Blade, and everything like that. Um, it's like after, after Blade passed, you know, it was a, I would say it was kind of like a dark time in the city, you know, as far as like when it comes to like Detroit rappers and everything like that. But I feel like, you know, with you and, you know, I would, I will also say, you know, with Doughboy's Cash Out, y'all kind of like bridged that gap, you know, kind of brought like the, the younger generation, you know, to, you know, to, to listen, you know, more to Detroit stuff, man. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Dope boy, cash out. Uh, I believe they pioneers too. You know what I'm yeah. saying? In the city, one hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. But you know, let's 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 talk about the music, man. Let's talk about the music, man. Because um, you know, I was uh, you know, I listened to the music. And I can't lie, man. It was like it was like a couple years, man. I was wondering. I was like, man, where the hell is Dusty at, man? Where the hell is Dusty, man? Now I gotta, yeah. I gotta ask you, man. That that time period, I want to say in between, was it sincerely flees and uh, was it B and B three? I think it was like maybe about yeah. about four or five years, man. What what yeah. happened? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, ain't nothing happening, really, bro. I just, like, I really, so, yeah, so, so, uh, so to answer that question, I got to really take it, you feel me, take it a little back, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, after one, of course, after one and I'm out here, I signed a record deal, like, but I, when I signed my record deal, it took, like, a year for me to sign my record deal. Mm. Um. From the from the from the start of from really not even a start really from I'm out here to like from 2010 or yeah 10 when I'm when I dropped I'm out here to 11 when I put out one and I'm out here was like at its like peak in the city as far as like getting the most spins on the radio most club play all that after that I signed a record deal a whole year later but I was in talk like the I I. The crazy thing is, I signed. The, I, I, I was in. I was in talks with the label to sign the deal. It just took a whole year to put the to do the deal. Damn. Like we, yeah. Like it. It really was like a one a one a solid year. You know what I'm saying? So, um, at that point, it was like, damn. Like my buzz is still there a little bit, but. Um, you know, I, I need to I need to make some more songs. I need to put some more music out. But the label wanted to, they like had they little own ideas they wanted to do. That's why I put out one five. I'm like, man, I'm about to just put out one like 2012. I'm like, bro, I'm about to just put out one point five because they they wanted to put out two, right? Mm-hmm. But they was taking so much time to do the record deal, and then I had to record two. At that point, I had one five already because one five was just songs. One five, for the most part, was a lot of songs that I had left over from one. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Didn't put on. So I was like, you know what, man? I'm about to just drop this shit called. I'm about to just drop another CD right now. Call it 1.5 until the label can, you know what I'm saying? Figure it out. Whatever right? you need to do for two. You know what I'm saying? Start yeah. recording and get me. You know what I'm saying? Doing all the little label shit. So that's what I did. Yeah. So, um. So, I, like I said, I signed that bad record deal. My my A&R, he really wasn't a, like a like a risk taker. Um, he was from Flint, that's why I fucked with him in the in the get go. Cause I had like I had a small little lightweight bid and where like 
I had like three or four labels that wanted to sign me. Mm. But I fucked with Dog because Dog was from Flint. I'm like, well, he from the, he got a little bit more invested interest because he, you know, he from around the way. So he might want to see the city. So I'm thinking he going to be like, you know, really like taking risks for me, putting it on the line for me at this time. Like, you know, really, you know, putting me in the position that I need to be in. So I went with him. So, um, you know, that happened. And then the deal just, the, the whole shit was sour. Like, me and my a and really didn't see eye, not eye to eye because he was like, he was like a nigga who, which some of the shit I understand now looking back in hindsight, but he wanted to like, like he wasn't like a nigga who to me was about bread or getting some money. Like I'm a gambler, I go get money. Like I gamble yeah. every day as far as like what I do, as far as what I invest in. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I looked at him as a nigga like he like to me he just wanted to party and fuck hoes, do all this little shit that I have been doing for like dog oh, man that shit owed me bro. I'm trying to get Make to some money. tape. Yeah. But in hindsight, like even even that shit there was still like a way of kind of like moving around that's just how they move around in the industry they party and they fuck each other and they do all type of little weirdo shit so but i like i said i wasn't on that tip you know what i'm saying i was i'm getting i'm pleased i'm i'm a real personal personal um what they call it a uh, uh personable person you know what i'm saying like a private person you know what i'm saying i really don't you know what I'm saying? I want everybody in my business, know who I'm sleeping with, know where I'm at, how I'm moving. So I'm, you feel me? I, I move a little different. So we clashed there. And then, you know, like I said, he just didn't seem like a risk taker to me. So um, it took like years and years, years for like, so two, they never really even put out. Mm -hmm. So I, I put two out on my own too, because like they was bullshit. And so they said they was going to give me some support and didn't. Damn. I'm like, fucking put it out myself. Um then um I put out Buffer. They I'm like, damn, you know, they gave me a look like they didn't I wouldn't even call it a little push. Like they did some little shit for two. Actually they what happened with two was two um actually went to Empire at that time. Like niggas don't even know. Like I've been like Empire, I've been knowing Gazi and all them dudes for a long time. Yeah. So I was working with them on two. You know what I'm saying? Because they was like, at this point, they was coming up in the game. Like, they wasn't what they are now. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I worked with them on two. Like, Atlantic didn't do shit. They just was like, fuck with, fuck with Gazi and them. Right. Boom. So, um, they didn't really come in until, like, um, Evergreen. And when they when I did Evergreen, it was still go fuck with Gazi and them. You know what I'm saying? But they right. did shoot me one video. They shot a paper video for me. Like, I didn't have, that's the only thing. That's the only thing Atlantic paid for me to do mm. is pay for a video for me. And I was like, that was out of all that time. Like, that was the only thing I could record them, like, actually put some money into it. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it really wasn't their money. It was my money. It was the money that was signed <laughs> over to me as, as a budget. You feel me? Which really is a credit line. You right. know what I'm saying? So, um, but that was pretty much the only money that, that was spent out of my budget that I had to um, um, basically make back for the label or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get you. And then, like I said, like all that time I had moved to Cali, uh, and it just wasn't nothing. I, like I wasn't feeling it. Like I just wasn't feeling the music. Like if you if you've been listening to Fleet, like Dusty for the for since one, you already know. Like like the music business always been like funny to me like mm -hmm. niggas like, like you meet your favorite rappers and shit and they like you you look at them as like heroes that coming up like when you ain't even in the game then you get in the game and you be like damn these niggas lame like like lame on another level not like lame for what they got and what they dress like and all that i'm talking about just a personable like morally like lame like y'all lame bro mm -hmm. y'all niggas do some lame shit so all that shit had started turning me from the music business. And then at one point, like, like I had started noticing, like, when I was in the, like, when I was in the D, I just came, woke up one morning, like, man, why am I fucked up? Like, why am I, like, why am I fucked up right now? Like, mm. why ain't getting no money? Like, I'm supposed to be getting money, bro. Like, and I thought about it, like, man, cause you ain't hustling like you accustomed to hustling. Mm. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm accustomed to hustling every day, waking up, looking for some money to get before this music shit. You know what I'm saying? I kind of like stopped hustling like in 2000, probably like 2000 and probably like right after uh, 1.5 is like I really like I was still hustling from 1 to 1.5. You know what I'm saying? Whatever right. I was doing, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna get into all that, but you know, just whatever. Um, and I stopped. When I went move to Cali, I like stopped hustling. I'm like, damn. Man, why, you know, why am I fucked up? I'm sitting around waiting on it, waiting to get a bag with this music shit. And I can't even get no money in this shit like this. Like, because, you know, at the time, it ain't no streaming. Right. Um, album sales is like through iTunes only and CDs really is dying. Um, and it, it really ain't no money in it like that right now for independent artists. Like, right now, like, because I was literally still an independent artist just on a on a major, major but I'm still independent because yeah, yeah. I'm not a priority. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing everything still out of my own pocket. And I was living in Cali. I got a motherfucking $2,000, um, $2,500 apartment. Um, I'm like, dog, why the fuck am I fuck? Like, I just start thinking, I'm like, bro, it's over. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm back at it. I'm back in that mode. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I, uh, I just like, man, dog, this music shit ain't making me no money. I don't really care for the, the, the business like that, how these niggas be moving. And I just really was like, I was, I stayed making music. I stayed making music. I see the doggy. I see the doggy. Yeah, I see the doggy. <laughs> uh, I stayed making music the whole time. I just wasn't putting it out, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I was still in love with making music and making, doing the art, but I just didn't, I just wasn't trying to put it out, you know what I'm saying? I was yeah. like, fuck it, I'm not I'm gonna figure out a way to put it out where I can really just be fully 100% independent and I can make some money off of it. So, from that 2015 to 2018, it's me just getting my money back right, yeah. Um, getting my family back right. You know, well, my family was never fucked up like that, but it was like me, you know, I was fucking shit up because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing as far as you know I'm taking all my money and investing it in music you know what I'm saying living in an apartment like when I could be you know I could be really just fleeced like I really wasn't myself like I really wasn't feeling myself so I was like man I gotta get back to what I what I am dog like I gotta get back to, to that mode that I be in like waking up you know where the pay at yeah. uh, I'm here up you know, and like I said, and it's not even talking no street shit or nothing like or you know whatever. I'm just saying like whatever. I I'm gonna get some money today. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck if I gotta buy buy a uh, buy uh, ten pair of Yeezys and flip them. Right. I don't give a fuck what I gotta do. You like, gonna make I gotta a get back. To, I gotta get back in that hustle mode. I gotta get that hustle back to me. And that's what I've been on like the whole the whole that whole three years. And then when y'all see me come back, I was back. I was like, all right, nigga, I came home. Got cops and cribs, did this, you know what I'm saying? Got my family, me and my, me and my uh, girl, we got another crib. Just was going, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just been up from there, you know what I'm saying? So, like, now music for me, I can I can easily put, I can put music out now because I'm not relying on music, money from music because I know how it is mm -hmm. when you're an independent artist and you ain't got no, like, I'm really, in, like, niggas say it's a difference between being with an independent label and being an independent artist. See, that's where niggas get the shit fucked up at. Like, Migos and them is on an independent label. They still get money. Like a man. Yeah. Yeah, they still have a budget just through an independent label. That's it. But I look at them as a major. I look at QC as a major label to me because you the top dog in the game. It's like No Limit mm -hmm. or, or uh, Cash Money. Like, these are independent labels, but they really then got cut a stupid bag from the from the higher you know from the higher umbrella which is maybe universal or wherever that's coming from you know whatever that that parent label is to them they cut them a bigger bag so they can fund their independent label that's all that be so but me i'm i ain't never been with an independent label even when niggas thought i was signed to one i was never signed to one like one is my like my cousin right. you feel me never Ron gave me opportunity. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say he never did nothing for it. He did a lot for me as far as that. But, you know, niggas was trying to say, oh, when I first came out, like, oh, nigga, Juan doing all this. Nigga, Juan never put no money up for me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, he gave me opportunity, though. 
He gave me opportunity. He gave me a, a facility to work in, which I then took and passed the bag. Of, I mean, the, the rock to all my niggas. So I brought Big Sean to the label. I brought GT. Mm. I brought Big Mac. I brought all these niggas, Big Shan. Uh, producers, the nigga, my nigga Yola, you know what I'm saying? Which mm -hmm. the, then trickled down to them bringing they niggas in and they niggas in, and it was just like the, we, which was what they call it today Capital Park, you know what I'm saying? Right. But back to the other shit, like, we, I never had no independent deal. Everything that I did was like directly from like my, just like me going out and hustling and or how I'm getting my money and putting it right back into the music. That's my independent. You feel me? That's, that's, to me, that's my independent. I don't knock nobody that got an independent deal, though. It's cool. Like, that, I honestly believe you should use another nigga money. You know what I'm saying? Personally, that's what I believe now to this, at this, at this point, as me, as far as me, when I, as much as long as I've been doing the, in the business and, um, moving around, like, I, I, I honestly believe you should use a nigga money. I used to be like, man, I ain't, I ain't taking no money from no niggas. You know what I'm saying? Right. For this shit. Used to be like that because that's the, but that was the men, that was the hood nigga mentality. It'd be like, I ain't, nigga, I ain't taking no wrong from no niggas or ain't no nigga. You feel me? But mm -hmm. really, really in business, you always that's how I work with any business. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just business. So if you're not gonna fully fund your shit yourself a hundred percent and be willing to get the backlash and get the doors shut in, a lot of and it's a lot of doors that close because you gotta. What they call in business, they say, like, you got to be in, like, there's no gay shit, no homo shit. It's like, you got to be in bed with somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then that's really what you got to do. You got to be in bed. I mean, you got to be, you got somebody got to be in your pockets, pretty Damn. much. So, you know, say the less, you know what I'm saying? So that's just what it is. And nobody was really in my pocket like that. So I, I honestly feel like that was another reason why, um, you know, it didn't. Well, Atlantic did get in my pocket at one point, but they just like I said, I, I already explained that. Like yeah. I had, a, I, I didn't have an A and R who was, you know what I'm saying? Uh, who I felt like was a risk taker yeah. and, and take, you know, really, really can get some shit in motion. So, you know, that that's pretty much. I said all that to say, like that's like going back to your main question, like through that whole time, that's. Like, oh, that's just it's all the shit that's in my mind and my and my thought process. Like, nigga, I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta get back on my hustle, get my bread back up, where I don't have to rely on money from music. And this is be like I said, this is pre-streaming and all this shit. Where so the reason I started back, like, all right, I'm gonna start back putting on music because now I'm seeing it's it's ways to you can make like you can literally make a lot of money. Being a real, it, I mean, you could you could back then too a little, if, and it was very rare though. Mm -hmm. It was very rare for you to be an independent artist and like make millions and millions of dollars. It was very very rare if you didn't have millions and millions of dollars to back it. See, if you had millions and millions, if you had multi millions to put into it first, we hood rich. I ain't got I ain't got no hundred. I ain't got ten million. I'm hood rich. I'm a hood rich nigga. You feel me at this point? I got 70, 80, 80, 100 bands. You know what I'm saying? Right. I ain't got millions of dollars. So at this at this point, I don't. So I'm like, okay, I'm a, I'm a, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just fall back. I'm going to put everything that I'm getting, make all the money that I'm making into um, residual income that I, that I own now. When I when I'm when I start back making music, I don't care if it sells. I mean, I would love it. I would love for it. I do care if it sells. I want it to sell, but I'm not gonna be stressed if it don't. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was like that was my whole shit for that. I said all that to say to answer your question. That was my thought process of from 2015 to 18 to why I was putting on music, but I'm still making music. Yeah, man, I appreciate you telling you breaking it down for me like that, man, because, you know, it's a you know, it's a lot of people out here, you know, especially, you know, like uh, like my little brother, man, he's you know, he's trying to, uh, you know, figure out like the whole rapping thing and everything like that and trying to figure out himself. But, you know, it takes these types of lessons for him to, you know, to hear it from somebody that actually went through it to understand what, you know, he may be getting into at the end of the day, you know, if he decide to go that type of route, man. 
But shit, man, let me, uh, you know, let's get back to the music, man. Let's talk about this music, man. Now, you know, shout out, shout out to Eli, man. Shout out to my dog, Eli, man. I, I know Eli through, uh, another guy. Shout out to my, my dog, Brando Heat. You know, he's another producer. And, you know, it was, you know, I was glad to see, you know, you dropping music, especially, you know, when it came to B&B 3. And to also see him on a new shit, man. On that, that quiet as, as it's kept, man. Man, tell me, man. What, you know, what was, what was your th- thought process? You know, what was you thinking when, when you put, you know, quiet as it's kept, man, the other day? Hello? Can you hear me? My fuck. Oh, yeah, I can if hear you, you now. Uh, if you, uh, for one, Eli's like, to me, like one of the hardest niggas, like, and if you go back to my catalog, if you go back like to one and two, one point five, all that, like you hear like I like real music. Like I like I don't just listen like honestly I don't even listen to rap music, to be honest. Like it's it's very few niggas that I listen to. It's I listen to like old shit for the most part. Like it'd be like I I still listen to Jay. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The go. I listen to Nas. I listen to a lot of old shit. And if it is some new niggas, it's probably like I, I skim through some Cole. Um, I fuck with Drake. You know what I'm saying? I always run a Drake album. Um, but it be, it, you know, it don't be the trendy shit. It's like I don't really be knowing what's going on with this, with with the trend, with the new shit. To be honest, and yeah, that could be a bad thing and, and a good thing. You know what I'm saying for me as an mm-hmm. artist. But um, um, Eli. If you go, like I said, if you go listen to my shit, I always listen. I always had like an ear for like just good music, and I just feel like dog. Just his beats is like he 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 remind me of like a a, a hit boy mm. and Dylan mixed together, like meshed in together. I hear it. You yep, know? I hear it. So yeah, so I, I I fuck with dog. So I ask dog like I I literally like I ain't giving no bread or nothing for to sign. Like I really like just wanted to just fuck with him. I was like, bro, let me just I'm working this little label that I'm about to do. Really, it's really not even a label. It's a management company. And with with Turtle One Fifty, we just like with the with the um with the music specter of it, we just managing people. Like we not like signing nobody. Like we don't want to own shit or no. I don't want to own nothing from nobody. I want them to own their own shit, just like I own my shit. So I was like, "Bro, just do an exclusive deal with me. You can still have your own manager. It's like a, um, it's like a uh, eat what you kill type deal. It's like, nigga, whatever I bring to the table, that's what I eat off of. You know what I'm saying? Like that's right. it. Like, nigga, what you do on your own. You that's you. Keep it. I don't want none of it. And um, I think it's innovative. And um, it was brought to it. That's the same thing I did with a nigga, my man CDR, which is another nigga from the league that's from the city that's like a legend in the city. Yeah, I know Chris Doug, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what me. That's the kind of deal me and CDR got with you know with him and me. Like he just basically came to me like, look, and that's where I got the idea from to do it with with my with the people I fuck with. Like, bro, if I can put a situation on your hand where you can eat. That's how I we eat like that together. Right. Like whatever you do, you know, usually managers they want twenty percent of everything or fifteen twenty percent of everything. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, I don't want twenty fifteen percent of everything. I just want to eat what I kill. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So whatever I bring to the table, that's what we rock. You feel me? So um, that's how that's what me and Eli did together. You know what I'm saying? So and dog just hard, bro, and yeah. I fuck with him. So he was he started sending me beats like. Years ago, like in 2000, and it really like even before um before three came out, like you sending me beats in like 2015, 16 and shit. And I just wasn't in the. I was like I said, I wasn't putting out no music at the time, so nothing mm-hmm. ever came out. But I, bro, I got like I, mean, I got hundred over hundred songs with dog right now. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's old shit. Some new, you know what I'm saying? Most of the new shit is on on um uh, on quiet he was kept, but I got so much shit with dog, so Man. Man, I fuck with him hard and he a young humble nigga and he he remind me of me, you know what I'm yeah. saying? The nigga that you know, just be just cool, a cool young nigga. He don't be tripping, he don't be on tip. 
So I fuck with him, and you know. Man, let me yeah. ask you about a, uh, about another guy, man. That 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 we see here frequently, man. Where's Ice Pick, man? Um, Ice Pick, you know what? Y'all Ice still Pick, like I, y'all still doing shit or what's going on? Ice Pick did a he did same twenty four on, on Quiet as Kept. Oh and then, um, man, another producer. Okay, okay. Pick is in uh, I think he out in Cali just trying to work his move. You know what I'm saying? He out there just you know in the studio trying to you know. You know, get on, get on. I guess you know what I'm saying. I really don't talk to him like that. Yeah. Um, but you know, you know, he cool. Yeah, man, because I was definitely, I was going to bring that up, man, because same 24, you know, that's like, you know, one of the, you know, one of one of my like favorite songs off the, uh, you know, off the new shit, man, because it's like, you know, kind of like in that song, man, you just explaining like shit, you know, why I hate when we got the same amount of time, man, we can we can all go out here and get it. All right. 100 percent. Yeah. Yup, shit. Another one I will say is probably box orders, man. Listen, I I never heard of uh Boulev- what was it Boulevard Eno, but yeah, Boulevard. yeah, but but dog, but doggy straight on there, man. We, you know how that come yeah. about? Um, I just hit him like, bro, like you want to jump on a song, and he just jumped on it. <laughs> so, That's simple. Uh, so so so. I mean, it's not really a deep, deep intel backstory on it, but uh, Dog just fuck with me. He fuck with the music. He, you know, he be telling me, you know, as, as early on, like before I, you know, really did some music with him and shit. He hit me up for a feature, and I'm the type of nigga like sometimes like I don't really be a lot of like it's a lot of niggas that I didn't just did free features for, bro. I'm gonna just put it like that. Like I don't mm-hmm. like sometimes it don't be about the bread for me. Like you know what I'm saying? Especially early on, like early on when I was when I had it, like when I had a lot, a lot, like a lot of music money. Like I wasn't even doing no free features. I mean, I wasn't even doing no features charging niggas really, dog. Like if I I was I put it like this, I was doing features for bread. But if you was coming to me and I fuck with you and you was and you was making some noise or you not even making some noise if you was if I see you trying to work your move, yeah, I just on it and pretty much that's what would, what happened with dog. He um he called me one day or he got in contact with me somehow and um I don't remember I can't remember the backstory on that but he asked me for a feature and I just did it for him. You know what I'm saying off the strength and like I said like. I couldn't really even name a song from Dog from you if I wanted to at that at that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I and feel you. I ain't gonna mention too many names, but it's a lot of niggas that's I did that for in the city. Um, and uh, you know, I fucked with him, man. Like I said, he was a real nigga. He was a thorough nigga, and um, he was from the zone, and uh, he's from Zone Eight. And I used to hustle over there. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like I literally used to hustle over there. Me and my cousin, my cousin had a spot over there, and my aunt, my my aunt. You know what I'm saying? And we used to just, you know, I used to be over there, and right? Like it's like nigga, just fucking hoes <laughs> and whatever. Like my cousin, <laughs> like my cousin just my, one of my aunts. She passed away. Now God bless her soul. Right. But she, uh, like she was like 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 one of my. She really my cousin, but. She's so much older than us, and my and her son is my age. So we cousins. I call her auntie. You feel me? Yeah. But you know, she like my mom's cousin. So she really my cousin type shit. So but you know how that goes. Yeah, I know how um, it is. Yeah. Yeah, but so um, every since since I have you know been a kid, like they spot was like the the fun spot. Like I would want to go over there because you know his mom was like. Like kind of like she was the cool mom, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She was, she didn't, you know, she cussed us out and shit, but you know she was cool. She let us fuck with hoes, <laughs> all type of shit. We couldn't disrespect the career, but no shit like that. But you know what I'm saying? Like she was just cool, you know what I'm saying? She was one of them cool parents. You feel me? So, and uh, like I said, my cousin, they had a spot in the zone. That's where we used to just be, you know, be at all the time and shit. And, right. And um, when I learned dog was from the zone, I told him, like, you know, like, you, know I used to, you feel me? Tap in. That's I used to be at. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So, so I used to make, make, make my move over there. So, um, you know, I did the first one, bro, and that's how I came about. And then I called him last year. 
It was like, bro, I'm going to throw you on the song. You, you fucking with it? He like, yeah, bro, send it to me. I, I'm like, fuck it. I just shot him the song, jumped on it. Um, I done had it. I sat on it for a minute, and I was going to put it on Name Me Money, but I'm like, no, I don't, it ain't going to go on there. I'm going to put it on the next one, you know what I'm saying, that I'm going to put out and I'm going to push for real, for real. Because I had already shot videos for Name Me Money. I was, like, done with that. Like, I get kind of, um, what you call it, uh... I be like over shit so fast, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. well, all right, that's that one done. I'm going to the next one, and you know that's why I ain't put it on there because I I figured we was gonna I want I was gonna want to do a video and do all that shit for it. So that's what happened. But bro, I fuck with him. He hard, you yeah. know what I'm saying? He hard nigga. Yeah, you definitely, man. You definitely introduce. You know, Andrew, I I would feel like you know you know you introduce a lot of people to him, man. Because up until that point, I ain't I haven't heard of him, but you know what he did on that song, I was like, oh shit, you know, dog talking that shit that I like, so it was cool. But yeah, but yeah, man, Dusty, but shit, man, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I got probably like one or two more questions before you go, man. I want to let you get back to your daughter and your family, man. But um. Oh, good. But yeah, man, like shit, even as of recent, man, I seen I seen you on early, man. I seen y'all cooking up on IG. You know, is it is it pretty much safe to say that y'all got a project coming together, man, or you know, what's going on, man? Yeah, yeah. We gon uh well, we had a project that we was gonna put out, but but uh, we was gonna do it through this one company that Earl fucked with and they just kinda just dropped the ball with it. Oh, uh, we've been shit. like repeat, like we didn't drop like two or three songs together, just me and him. Like, we did the pull-up that was on Name Me and Money. Mm-hmm. And then we did a song called Interview with my, with my little dog. Super, Super Kane. Kane. Yeah, I fuck, I fuck with the interview, man. You you was real snappy on that bitch, man. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, that bitch was hard. Yeah. Um, and Eli, Eli did that beat. Um, and um, then we did... Uh, then we did another one. We dropped another one. Me and Earl dropped another one. I forget the name of that one. Uh, and we and him, me and him and Super Kang got another one. It was really, it's really supposed to be me, him, and Super Kang who's gonna do a project, us three. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, when the COVID shit hit, I end up leaving Cali. Earl actually left Cali before me and never came back. And then when COVID hit, I left Cali. I'm like, I'm, I'm, we out of here. Me and my girl and my daughter jumped on the road. Like, I drove back from California to Detroit. Damn. So. Yeah, because I was staying. We was, we was down there for a whole year. I was in Cali. Like, I have, you know, I used to live in Cali. But I once, um, me, and, me and my girl went down there. And my daughter, once she was born, we went down there, like, the summer of ninth or, was it was in 19? Yeah, 19. Mm-hmm. Yeah, summer of 19. And we had stayed down there up until, like, damn near, like, March. Damn. Yeah. When it first hit, yeah, so, that's when it started getting anyway, crazy. We dropped that album and we never did because everybody was just misplaced and shit. But me and Earl, yeah, we gonna we gonna um, yeah, we we gonna do the IG album for sure. Like that's that's like the next little thing. Like we just trying to find a way. Because me personally, like I said, I don't know, I don't be knowing how to interact with social media because all the shit I be seeing is goofy. I be honestly thinking like niggas don't be wanting to see that type of shit, but I guess niggas do. Um. Hell yeah, man! People want to see the process, man. Sometimes, you know, people want to take a take a take a step in the kitchen, man, and see see how y'all boys work, man. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's what's that's what's up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I said, I really ain't no social media guru, so I don't really be, I don't really be knowing. I just get on there and like a few pictures, and that be it. You know what I'm saying? But I fuck with it. I mean, I definitely fuck with it. So I'm a um. We gonna do that. We gonna do that. We gonna drop. We gonna do a whole tape, a little EP on, on, on Instagram Live. Do the hooks. Probably come back around, do the verses later, and then just drop it for the people. And like I said, we just offer niggas to come in and you know whoever got beats, whoever want to help do some hooks, song right with us, whatever. That's just the whole, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Man, and you know. And before I get up out of here, man, shit, man, how's how's Juanito, man? How's Juan, man? Juan well, doing real good. Juan well, out here just trying to catch up 10 years of his life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I was taking from him. So, you know, he just, um, I don't talk to him every day. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, the nigga just, he just be moving, bro. And, you know, nigga can't do nothing but respect that. Like, the nigga just, you know, 
a nigga been sitting down for 10 years, bro. You just want to do, you got so much time that you trying to get trying back. To make up, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just, that's just what it is. So, Ryan doing good, bro. He working on music. He working on businesses. Well, when I was seeing him, I pulled up on him. He was talking about cribs. And, he, <laughs> man, we just, he set up for about a few hours, dog. You know, yeah. he's talking about everything. He, he, he really just trying to do everything right now that he that he missed that he didn't missed out on so you know so hopefully some music um, i'm i'm but i can't wait to hear some music that he put out i don't think he started recording yet but I, maybe he did i don't know um but he doing good though that's what's and up yeah, man, cause it, that shit was real big when i when i saw that post you put on instagram i was like damn like that shit was just crazy man <laughs> Yeah, shit was heavy, man, and nobody knew. I didn't even know he was had came home. Um, like he, he got out, say the the the, the <clears throat> motherfucking girl just came and got him. Was like, you going home, nigga? And said he didn't call and tell nobody. He just came home. Yeah. Man, again, again, fleas, man. I, I definitely, man. I appreciate you taking time out of your day, you know, especially, you know, you know, with your baby. I can, I can hear her in the background. And again, man, I, I appreciate you so much for doing this shit, man. Like I said, man. And you know, in my eyes, and to my, to my, my brothers and my family, even my old man, shit, you a legend out here, man. And we appreciate you, man. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Um, whatever, dog. Like I said, bro, I rock with I rock with the city, bro. So hard, like um, Detroit nigga to the core. So you know, we 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 you know it don't stop, nigga. We get another one in whenever, and, you know. When I'm promoting some new shit or whatever, I don't, you know, it don't matter. Believe that, believe that, man. You know, like I always say, man. You know, I appreciate all my listeners. You know, this is Drug Table Talk Podcast with Meet Your Spiff. We don't sell drugs, man. We sell knowledge and slang game. This was Dusty. I'm Meech, man. And again, Dusty, I appreciate you, man. You have a good day, man. 100%, my guy. All right, want it.